How many of you know what is the median age of the average Indian today? The median age of an Indian. It's around 28.2 years old. That's right. You know the average age of the IAS entrant, a civil servant? It's around 27. In almost every respect, we have a young India and young Indians leading the aspirations of such a young country. But what about politics? What's the average age of a politician? Is it possible to mention? Is it possible to measure something like that? What is it about that profession that makes it harder? Well, if we look at the average age of parliamentarians globally, it's around 53. Whereas the average age of uh, an Indian MP is somewhere around 58. So you have half the country which is 28.2 years or younger, whereas the average age of people making the laws that govern these very people on average are something like 58 years old. What is it about that profession that makes it harder for youngsters? Is there nothing that we can do? Well, I think there is. My name is Rishwanjas Raghavan and I am on a mission to bring youngsters into mainstream political governance. Most people are on this platform after they have achieved something significant, as we have heard from the speakers before. Not me, not yet. I am here today because I am in pursuit of something significant. And the hope is that by sharing my ideas with all of you on this platform, it can help achieve that vision faster. That's why I'm here. So let me start with my story. I don't come from a conventional background in politics. I was born in a, a traditional Kannadiga middle class family. Uh, my mother is into performing arts and culture. My dad is into IT. My little brother, not so little anymore. This is the family from which I come. But uh, growing up, I was someone who always was interested in taking the lead, taking the responsibility for the smallest of things, uh, getting small things done. I contested my school captain elections, so that's where it started in school. I went to Ashoka University in Delhi for my undergrad, and uh, there, within a few months of, of entering university, I contested the elections again. And like we heard before, I had a similar story um, that I ended up getting 17 votes in the first election that I contested. The least wanted candidate in the entire university across all the candidates. So very similar story. And the year after that, one year, uh, I just got to working. I was interested in campus life issues like food, transport, policies, residence life. I just started doing my small initiative, with small things and it got noted and exactly a year later, uh, I ended up from being the lowest voted to the highest voted candidate in the election in the history of the university until that point. So it, it's all about the work that spoke for himself. And uh, my party also managed to become very successful. We built several communities on campus. Um, I led some movements, some initiatives to make sure that policies are more student friendly. Uh, but I also worked with the administration. I was very interested uh, not just in uh, protesting and making noise, but also understanding how the administration, the governing uh, bodies think. So I worked behind the scenes with many of the administrators. And uh, before I knew it, I realized that uh, I want to work on something bigger. I had the passion, I had the flair, and that's when I entered mainstream politics. I started working with different parties. I started working with the Aam Aadmi Party in Delhi, um, after that, I wrote some cold emails. I got opportunities to work with elected MPs, MLAs. Uh, at the age of 19, I was able to uh, start attending sessions of parliament. For an otherwise good student who had a good attendance record in my last year at university, I used to miss classes and attend parliament and meetings with ministers. So that's where uh, it started. And I worked with ministers across party lines, the BJP, the Congress, across ideologies, because if you want to understand how the system works and you want to have some impact, you have to work with the system, irrespective of all ideologies and differences. So that's what I did. I spent two, three years uh, working at the national level with different uh, leaders, with different representatives, and I got a feeling for real impact. There were thousands of people I was able to help on a day-to-day -day basis, solve some problems, um, focus on policy making, make sure that uh, certain events are, uh, are organized, impacting Indian laws. So I got a feel uh, for that. I was invited uh, to share my views on issues, to share my work. I was recognized. And it was a, a great opportunity for someone like me uh, who hadn't even imagined that something like this was possible. Sitting in parliament with the prime minister, with the finance minister about 20 meters away and participating in the process of policy making in India. It was unimaginable. But then came my question. 
What's the point? Yes, I know I'm making a difference, but a small difference. But am I making any changes? Is there any impact that I'm having? Because if I wouldn't do this, I grabbed an opportunity that I got. But if I hadn't done this, someone else would have, right? I am just one small, one very, very small part of, of the larger political system that's there. I wanted to have a, a slightly different impact, a greater impact. I wanted to make the difference and not just uh, be in line with what's happening in the country or just listen to what's being said or just follow what's being done. Uh, so that's where I started thinking about India's political system. So let me ask you guys this. How many of you have voted in an election ever? Almost all of you. Brilliant. And um, what elected representatives do you vote for? Do we vote for the Prime Minister directly? No. Do we vote for a judge? No. Do we vote for the police superintendent? No. There are these elected representatives that we vote for. Namely three across the country. At the highest level, as you all know, we vote for MPs parliamentarians who make laws and policies for the country, manage the union government, manage external relations. So this is level one. And then we have the second level in India's political system where we vote for MLAs. We vote for legislators at the state level. They come together to form the state government. They make state policies. They make state level schemes. And then you have the third tier of governance. This is called local governance. This includes panchayats in your villages, municipalities in your towns. In, in big cities, these are your municipal corporations. Mumbai has a BMC. Delhi has an MCD. Bengaluru has a BBMP. These municipal corporations or urban local bodies, the third tier of India's governance, these are the ones who are tasked with functions that are so important that they impact yours and my day-to-day -day lives, arguably more than even the higher levels. Anything that you can think about that impacts my day-to-day -day life and your day-to-day -day life. Trains, management, garbage, roads, potholes, public infrastructure, parks, street lights, sanitation. Most of these functions under India's constitution are given to this local smallest third tier of government. Yet, how much do we care about it? How much do we Indians care about it? Well, this was my realization. The same people who come out and vote in your Lok Sabha elections, in your state level elections, do not even vote in the local body elections. And this is a phenomenon all over the country. Do you know the last time there was a BBMP election in Bengaluru, what was the voter turnout? It was 45%. Less than half the number of eligible voters in the city were not even showing up to vote for an election which determined a huge part of their day-to-day -day quality of life. And you think it's small money? You think it's small impact? The average budget annually of BBMP in Bengaluru is 10,000 crores. That's how much money they spend every year, year on year, to focus on these local amenities that impact our day-to-day -day quality of life. That was my realization that there are so many people out there focusing on the national level, the state level, which is great. We need it. We need guidance in the country, in the state. But how many people are focusing on the local level? And that's what I set out to do. I joined this political party called Bengaluru Navanirmana Party, BNP, in its founding days. Uh, and um, I was really drawn to the mission because this is the world's perhaps first and only political party which has said and given in writing to the election commission that we are going to be focusing on just one city. No matter what, we are going to focus on just Bengaluru and just the local body. No state elections, no parliamentary elections just municipal corporation elections because that is where leadership and vision is lacking. So we brought together people from all walks of life. You may, have, you may not have heard because we are not doing marketing, we are not advertising. It's about the idea yet, we are building the foundation. People from all walks of life, students, activists, professionals, corporates, teachers, people from different castes, gender, religious background, bringing them all together to focus on just one idea and that is good governance for Bengaluru. In our sessions at Bengaluru Navanirmana Party, we even tell people, look, support whichever ideology you like. Support a prime minister of your choice. In the MLA and MP election, vote for whoever you want. But when it comes to the local elections, you need somebody who cares. You need somebody competent. Because the voter turnout is so low, you know the quality of candidates at the local municipal level? I'm not saying there are no good people. There are always good people everywhere. But the characteristic of the local elected representatives is that they are neither qualified nor least interested in local governance issues. Their interests are elsewhere, we all know that. 
Is that okay? Absolutely not. So that was the idea behind uh, Bengaluru Navadirmana Party. We don't talk about uh, things happening in Delhi or Kashmir or even north of Karnataka for that example. We focus on local issues. We focus on your Baswanmudi. We focus on your Maleshwaram. We focus on Bengaluru. These are small issues that we resolve, uh, take help of people on the ground, fix these issues. I won't go into too much detail, but without even being in power, we haven't yet contested our first BBMP election. But even without that, we have fo focused on local issues, uh, made sure that we bring a focus on Bengaluru's issues, su just suggest changes and improvements, not just make noise, uh, bring professionalism to politics. Uh, during COVID, we had an extensive work. We managed an entire system of uh, vaccinations, of helping people out, supplementing the local governance, using our professionalism to show that it is possible to be professional in politics, which we don't see very often today. Um, we focused on uh, digging out data, the 10,000 crores that I told you. We researched 65,500 projects in Bengaluru in the last five years. Put it out there in public so that people know where the money is going. Right? It's about transparency, about allowing people to participate. It's also about bringing youngsters. The nature of local issues is such that there is a less of an entry barrier for people like you and me. You can solve local issues. Uh, give your ideas. I've been focusing on speaking to young youngsters across the city, bringing them in to ward level issues. Uh, I've been speaking to youngsters through Bengaluru Navayuva, which is my youth initiative, telling them that, look, you need to care about local issues first, local governance first. So that's the idea. Look, I just shared what I have done in, in my city. The idea is not about what I'm doing. The idea is what I'm trying to do in my city, you can do in your area, in your ward, in your village, in your town, wherever you're from across the country. Think local. Because tell me this, if there is an issue about India-Russia relations tomorrow, India-China relations, can the finance minister come and ask for your opinion? No, you're just not the expert. Can your CM or your MLA come and ask you about how much agricultural subsidy to give or what the uh, tariffs or schemes in insurance policy should be. No, you're not specialists. We have voted for them for the reason that they do a job and if they don't do a good job, we vote them out. But when it comes to these local issues, who is the expert about where the road is broken in your area? Who is the expert about uh, where the garbage system is broken, where there is a lack of safety, sanitation? It's you and by nature, India's constitution empowers local bodies uh, by creating ward committees in cities like Bengaluru and many other cities where every month there is a meeting, you can go give your inputs, give your suggestions, ask questions about projects. How many of us know that? Very few, but let me tell you, it is on the rise. So the big message that I'm giving people is, is think local. When you talk about politics, think local first. And look, Local politics is also practical. Let me tell you this. Everyone might be thinking, okay, what is this guy thinking? Sure, the ideas sound good, but is it practical? Can you fight an election? Can you win an election? Do you know how many votes it takes to win a Lok Sabha election in India? MP election? A few lakh votes. A few lakh votes. What about an MLA election anywhere in the country? Tens of thousands of votes. Maybe even a lakh in, in big cities. But do you know how many votes it takes to win local body elections? anywhere from a few thousand votes to a few hundred votes as well, across panchayats, across corporations. In Bengaluru, some wards can be won even with three to four thousand votes. That is how powerful local politics is. And time and time again, individuals have been successful. Independent parties have been successful. That is how local politics works and there is an opportunity for everyone. Sure, it may be tough, it may be tough, there are issues there are other political parties, there are other interests. I hear all of you when you think about, um, there are so many barriers, sometimes you need money, sometimes you need so many things, but not at this level. And even if you are unsuccessful, just in pursuit of something like this, even if we fail, even if I fail, just trying to do something like this has already left an impact on the system and we haven't even gotten started, right? So yes, it's tough. If it was easy, everyone would have done it by now. But it is something worth doing, that's the point. Lastly, I also want to tell you that India is ready for young politicians. Maybe not in parliament, but definitely at the local level. Anyone who is 21 years of age and above is welcome to contest the third tier of governance elections, the local body elections. In fact, Chennai has a 21-year-old councillor. How many of you? Trivandrum, we had a 21-year-old mayor a few years back. 
right? So it's definitely possible. It may be the exception, but the fact that it is possible shows that nothing is stopping us from making it the rule. So what should you do? So what am I asking all of you to do? Am I asking all of you to stop everything you're doing and contest local elections? Well, I'm not asking you to do that, but I don't mind. If you want to do it, please, please join hands and let's do that no matter where you are in the country. But no, that's not what I'm asking from you. I'm asking from you to take the small steps. When there is an issue in your area, complain about it. When there are local elections happening, find out who are the local candidates. When they come to ask for your vote, don't just be happy about them telling you what they did in Delhi or what they did in uh, Sri Lanka or what they did for China. Ask them about your local issues. Make sure that your family, your parents, yourself, everyone around you vote. Make sure that the voter turnout is higher so that we can push issues, we can push candidates to be better the way that we want. That's what I'm asking you to do. And it does not involve um, a lot of sacrifice. For example, I'm, I lead a normal life too. I have friends. I enjoy traveling. I, I like uh, to pursue this uh, uh, hobby of, of surfing that I'm just learning. When I get time, I also like to travel. And um, when, when I'm free, I, I play this sport called Ultimate Frisbee. It's a brilliant, intense, mixed gender sport. You all should try it. I have coached teams, I have built teams in my university, um, in Bengaluru, it's played all over India. I do all of these things. I lead uh, a normal life too. I just graduated with my master's in public policy at National Law School. I'm consulting for a few media outlets on policies. What will I do in my career ahead for my livelihood? We'll figure it out. The odds are that I'm going to have a, a career very, very similar and close to all of yours. When there is a local issue that needs to be solved, I have no excuse to not go there. When a local election comes, I will participate in it because I owe this much to my city. And then there is an issue of sanitation and health hazard because of improper garbage management in your area. When there is lack of adequate safety because of no maintenance of street lights in the lane in which you walk every day. When there is a pothole in front of your house which causes an accident which could take anybody's life, at that moment, no chief minister or no prime minister is going to come to help you out. You need a local representative who cares. You need someone competent. Either you got to be that person, which is what I'm trying to do, or you do everything in your power along with your day-to-day -day life to make sure that whoever gets elected in that position is somebody who cares who you are focusing on, who you are pushing, because that is exactly what we need. Look, I owe this much to my city. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to your future. And you owe it to all the fellow citizens of this country. That is my idea. Thank you for your time.